Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Taking On Sports Podcast. This is a podcast made by the fans, for the fans. We want to hear from you guys, the fans. As always, that has not changed, but the name and the logo have changed, as well as the start time. Now start at 7.30. Let's get the boys in. Seth, Barrett, how is it going? Podcast Um, relaunch? Podcast relaunch night? Yeah. I mean, August 3rd. Football's August back. 3rd. This I mean, is officially season two of the podcast, but season yeah. one under the new name. Yeah. NFL uh, starts tomorrow. You know and what I mean? A year, we're almost a year into doing this. Wild. Kyle, what's up? Join join that league, Kyle. Don't be afraid. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. We're all in it. We're all in it. Yep. Football is heating up. Training camp's going on. Oh, yeah. Uh, Speaking of football, and let's just dive right into it. Deshaun Watson. He only got got a six-game suspension. The NFL is planning or is appealing it to get a full – to get an entire season suspension. What do you think is going on through this judge's head to only issue six games? I mean – I don't, I don't understand it, dude. Uh, I think it should have been a year. I think the NFL is going to push for a year. But if they do that, then they're going to he, – he's actually going to be able to play week one if the NFL does appeal it. And while waiting for that appeal, I think he gets to play week one. I could be wrong about that, though. I don't know. But hmm. what do you think, Seth? Freaking – that weirdo, dude. He's so weird. Yeah, I think it's obviously a ridiculous, ridiculous call by the judge. Only give him six games. And everybody knows he deserves a full season. I mean, the outrage was absolutely crazy whenever they heard six games. Calvin Ridley <laughs> bet on his own team to win for 1500 bucks, got six games. Yep. Uh, DeAndre Hopkins had a trace in one test for PEDs. Not any other test, just one. He had a trace, and he got six games. You like basically what well, I mean, people are calling it molesting at this point, almost 30 something women, and you get six games, I guess. So, yeah. Ben Roethlisberger, one accuser, what did he get four, four or six games? Yeah, you know, um, who's the other guy? There was another guy with Josh Gordon team. smoking weed, yeah, Got like 21 plus games. It was like two and a half seasons full of suspensions. Yeah. I made a same with uh, a, with uh, the wide receiver for Jacksonville that came out of Oklahoma State. He had an alcohol problem. Yeah, tell you, you what, about Justin Blackman. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Hey, a real mm-hmm. quick tidbit off the side. You would come right back to Deshaun. I watched some Justin Blackman highlights from the 2011 season because my friend's a big OSU fan. That dude was unstoppable. He's yeah. arguably one of the greatest college receivers of all time. Mm. Go yeah. back and watch it. No, like you I, have- I agree. I remember. I remember. He, yeah, it's like was we lived. We lived through it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we were in high school. Didn't really, you know. Anyway, Deshaun. <laughs> Deshaun, it's it's insane to me that he's going to get to play week one because the NFL will appeal. You know, Roger Goodell get this going to um, without a fight. Um, yeah. Yep. It's bad on the judge to give him only give him six. Yeah, that was a female judge too. That was very surprising. I mean, she looked at all the she looked at everything, I guess. I mean that's just I don't think she looked at anything, dude. I think someone lined her pockets. <sighs> to well, get who six has games. More, who has more the money? The NFL than obviously that? has more money, but it's like, do they want to ruin their integrity by paying off a judge? No, who's already ruined their integrity? Deshaun Watson. Why not keep the boat rolling, huh? Yeah. <laughs> Line of judges' pockets here. Maybe ask her to come over for a massage. I don't know. He must, <laughs> he done some weird. I don't understand the six game suspension, but I don't know. Text break. That's kind of wild here. All right. Uh, <laughs> it's going to be an ongoing thing all year. Barrett, what is going on? In Miami, losing a first round pick and losing a 2024 third round pick 
Like, what? I I didn't even notice. Uh, I've just been, you know, ha- focusing on this great training camp the Dolphins have had. But there was some something else happened. Uh, yeah, uh, you know, ownership, man. Listen, yeah, okay, this is my thought on this whole thing. I there's a part uh, a part of me. Oh come on, everyone tampers. Every team. And yeah. every every sports league tampers. You have you have NBA players. They have they all have each other's numbers. They're all talking. Like Miami's owner is just an idiot. Stephen Ross just essentially got caught. Brian Flores is a snitch or whatever. I'll cool. get to him in a second. But like you, as a fan, I guess it's like okay. He, he, he tried to go after Tom Brady and Sean Payton, like he tried to just get the whole thing. I can respect him for that, right? Like, hey, he tried to get – this was in 2019, um, before the Tua, before the Herberts and everything anyway. So I really think that yacht meeting, you know, he had Tom Brady there and, and Brian Flores didn't want no part of it because Brian Flores all of a sudden – you know, Brian Flores spent 15 years – with the with the New England Patriots who did a whole bunch of cheating shit and then he comes to Miami and now all of a sudden he's just some high and mighty guy with integrity get the fuck out of here man like he didn't he didn't speak up a, about one thing that New England did you know and he gets he gets fired because he's running our young quarterback into the ground pretty much making everyone walk in a single file line and practice like the dude is just off his rocker when it comes to personability like he got fired yeah they had two winning records back to back for the first time in like 20 years but like that dude look look where he went he's like a Steeler linebacker coach now because the Steelers you know they they felt like oh if we pick them up nah we're no you know we're we're the Roonies you know we got the Rooney rule we're gonna you do good by everyone whatever and he's just he's a snitch dude he's a snitch and like Stephen Ross is an idiot though, because he got caught. He, I mean, whatever they found out, um, I mean, in, in the tanking thing, they didn't even get the Dolphins on that. There's no evidence of them actually trying to tank. Yeah, the, I mean, they they won two games late that year against New England yeah. and somebody else. They beat the Bengals, which yeah, you know, costed Joe Burrow or whatever. I don't know. You know, but like it's just it's just one of those things where uh, got caught, man, and the, and the, and the first round picks are worth tampering. Uh, but let me just okay, the king of Finland, a, a good Twitter guy, he retweeted this or he he, he posted this. I, I retweeted it. Dan Snyder, you know, allegedly sex trafficked his cheerleaders. Ten million dollar fine. Robert Kraft, the Patriots owner, ran and participated in a prostitution ring. No punishment. You know, Ross unsuccessfully tampered, and we lose a first and third round pick. All of this right after the Sean thing dropped. I think the NFL was also trying to cover for the BS Deshaun thing. And now today, we've already talked about it. They're going to appeal Deshaun's thing. So, uh whatever man we lose our first rounder hopefully they do they do good but just there's just a a whole bunch of hypocrisy when it comes to everyone and 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 don't get and listen i don't like stephen ross i don't like change the logo i think he's an idiot there's been a lot of drama within the organization because of him Uh, i don't think he's a good owner like and i already said on this podcast months ago like it would be bittersweet if Miami won a championship because his old ass would like be a part of it because he's the owner. Like that just sucks. But you know, it, it's nothing to do with the players. It just it just hurts the fans. It hurts the players, and they had nothing to do with it. You know, Tua got asked today about it, and Tua was like, "When, when this happened, 2019? Yeah, I wasn't on the team. You know, so it's like, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, what do you do? I'm." There goes our first rounder. We have the Niners. We have the Niners first round pick. Yeah, you know. Hopefully, hopefully they don't need a uh, a two first round picks here to move up in the draft to get a franchise quarterback. Hopefully, two it pans out for them. Right. But, 
Yeah. I, this whole situation was just kind of wild reading all this I news mean, that was coming out. Yeah. I mean, well, what do you guys think? Is that, is that a lot like a first rounder for, I guess, unsuccessful tampering? Like, no, because there's harsher punishments out there that could have came upon them. Like losing a first round pick was obviously a de- like is devastating to a franchise because first round picks are most, most of the time game changers or instant starters now. Yeah. So losing your first rounder is kind of a big deal, but it's just like they could have got first, harsher punishment. It, the first and a third. Yeah, next year, 2024 third, which third round picks are starting like to become like, like third round picks aren't big. No, I was just getting ready to say that. Oh, yeah. I mean, third round picks yeah, are I was starting coming, to become I was, I was getting around to the third round pick. Yeah, give me some time. <laughs> yeah, it's well, yeah, in, my, in my opinion, that it's, it's harsh. That's harsh. Considering think, Tom Brady – I don't think Tom Brady was on a team, right? We had one left. Year, one oh, year he was under contract. In, was it one year yeah. left in New England? Billy, they only did it because of Flores's little bitch fest on his way out of Miami. No one would have ever figured it out. That's what I'm saying. Like teams tamper all the time. I guarantee you. It's just B flow on his way out was like, ugh, like, you know, they were tampering, Mr. Goodell. Ugh, you know, it's just like. Yeah, there's like four uh, or five NBA teams every year that get hit with tampering rolls. Lose, they usually yeah, lose like a second I mean, round pick. But Philly is going through it now with Harden. Like so, yeah, they only did that because you know, and because B, what B flows, uh, what all he claimed, they had they had to look into all that. And lo and behold, when you're looking into it, it's pro- you're probably going to get slapped. You're it, it's going to happen. Like. If they if they ever looked into any other thing, if they wanted to, they probably find out that Jerry Jones was talking to whoever, you know, or whatever. I mean, it's John happened. Gruden emails. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, and mm. they didn't release any other things from all that. They just released John Gruden stuff, you know. So, uh, it's it's it sucks, but whatever. Like, I just want to move past it. Like, I know all the the but. It's, that's well, luckily, a lot. Luckily, I, I believe the Finns will be good this year. So to be a back of the end, yeah. you know, there's a little bit of a something in that uh, losing that first pick. But where does it go? Yeah, is there only going to be 31 picks next year in the draft? Yeah, it's straight up forfeited. Uh, uh, ironically, every first round pick that has been surrendered due to something has all involved Tom Brady, <laughs> all three times. So. I think it's pretty harsh. Uh, a first, a third, a fine. Your uh, Stephen Ross can't. Well, he can't be at the facility till October fifteenth. Yeah. So Is that what I read. So check so this sad. out. So Stephen Ross actually technically got suspended the same amount of time, almost or a little bit longer than Deshaun Watson. <laughs> <laughs> So wow. he can't like affiliate himself with the team. Like he doesn't care. 1.5 million. I wish that I honestly would have them. Yeah. He can't go to the games. He can't do anything. I wish they would have taken the first rounder fine, but in doing so they would have kicked him, like kicked him to the curb, like get some new ownership in there. <laughs> yeah. It's like a little stricter on Steven Ross here. Yeah, let, let, yeah. Let, yeah let, let's don't damage the team, damage the owner. Yeah, it's I don't know. I feel a, like if owners are forced out, I feel like they just start making moves to just fuck the team up. Like as soon as they get like a bill of stuff, or they keep it intact so they can get more money out of it. But well, he's like a top ten billionaire. Like he's a top ten owner as far as money goes. Like he doesn't care. You know that's what I'm saying. Like Jerry Jones at least cares you know i don't know about the waltons with the broncos but they're number one now do they care you know you know the you know the old the old ford family you know they care they've just stunk i just don't yeah. think stephen ross cares that much you know he's just an old senile well they're mostly they're all all old and senile but hey jerry jones still cares <laughs> you know? yeah jerry jones makes you think he cares you don't give a fuck yeah, he, he cares about Zeke a lot, though. I don't know. Jerry cares, dude. 
Jerry, when Jerry, when Jerry gets a ring, I'll believe he starts caring because he's made some stupid ass moves in the past. You're right, but he, I mean, he still cares. Yeah, twenty something years, Barrett. He's carrying his ass off. Miami hasn't won a playoff game in twenty years. He made a bunch of cast space, let it sit there in the off season. Fuck it, doesn't matter. Mm. Yeah, I probably trades Amari, trades Amari Cooper for a fifth round pick. Fuck him, get him oh. out. Could have signed Von Miller, but didn't want to open the checkbook. Nah. Uh, yeah. Mm. yeah. Wow. So moving on from Finn's front office stuff, let's talk training mm. camp. How's training yeah. camp going for the Dolphins here? Hey, uh, pretty good. I got some notes here. Um, Trill Williams, keep that name in mind, especially with Byron Jones on the pup list and Noah Igbenogany getting cooked. Trill Williams, <laughs> like he's like 6'3", big cornerback. He got a pick six off of old Teddy Bridgewater. Everyone saw the Tua to Tyreek connection on Saturday. It kind of blew up. Um, you know, there it's just – it's a different feel, man. You know, at the beginning on Saturday when they had the fans, Tua was doing backflip – or Tua. Tyreek was doing backflips. They had some, like – I don't even know his name, like second, third string guy, like bang some energy cans and do the stone cold to get the, the crowd hyped. Uh, Mike, Mc, Mike McDaniel seems to be implementing his offense well. Uh, Austin Jackson kind of getting cooked. Uh, you know what I mean? Christian Wilkins, defensive tackle on the uprising, had a lot of good plays. Uh, Tyree. Oh, Gar oh man. I'm mad. Um, wow, you know uh, we've, had, garbage, we've had we've had Waddle in an orange jersey, which means that the pre they had the best uh, day from the training camp previously. So you had Waddle with the orange jersey. You had a uh, Tyreek had an orange jersey. Liam Eikenberg, the lineman, had a great day. He got an orange jersey. Oh, they're just fucking around. Dude, they're just handing out orange jerseys over there, huh? Tua yeah. had the orange. Tua had the orange jersey on today. Oh, now five yard out, orange jersey. Ah, ah so oh, a little, yeah. a little pressure on a third string left tackle. Here's a little bit. Here's a jersey. Yeah. Um, let's see. I think one of the biggest things I learned was uh, Mike McDaniel will call the plays directly into Tua, not like last year when you had like George Godsey, you know, calling plays to whoever the fuck, and then that person's <laughs> relaying it down to the frigging bird, and then the birds are talking to Matt Moore and Ryan Fitzpatrick. I mean, so to Mike McDaniel to Tua. Okay, and uh, let me uh, let me give you guys something here, okay, that I pulled off Twitter, all right? Anyone can look it up, public information. These are the potential cornerbacks that Waddle will face this year. Okay, with Tyreek being the number one, Malcolm Butler, okay, Clamp. Kyir Elam, a rookie, Chidobi Awuzi, Ahmad Gardner, Clamp. Sauce Gardner, a rookie. Andrew Booth Jr., a rookie, Cam Sutton, Mike Hughes, Kyler Gordon, a rookie, Steven Nelson, Char Charvarius Ward, Michael Davis. I mean, guys, if you're, I mean. That's going to be tough. Sounds like I'm taking Waddle in the elimination league. Hey, hey I'm just saying. He's – Waddle is going to be on some Are track. Are going to see a lot of Waddle Waddles out here this year? Probably. And and your boy, Seth, Cedric Wilson, watch out for him too. He's making some plays, man. Well, I mean, yeah, because Gallup, Gallup goes down, he has to make plays or he's going to get fucking cut. Uh, another tidbit, uh, your boy Connor Williams yeah, got right, put right, in right, the – <laughs> Your boy Connor Williams got put in the dirt by uh, Raekwon Davis. Yep, Easy. classic. You know, <laughs> you know, uh, he probably sure dragged him into the dirt too and got a whole sure, penalty. I'm sure probably, his Twitter is all over that. Yeah. Uh, so I think tomorrow is the first day in pads, or was it today? It might have been a little bit of pads today. Um, but yeah, looking good. Two is looking good. Um, however, uh, one of my favorite guys the last couple years haven't hasn't really panned out. My boy Preston Williams is a little. He's he, he might be traded. Cry baby. 
seeing it on. Yeah, he, he, he's crybaby in it. He's wanting he's wanting more opportunities and blah blah blah. Send it to Dallas. Yeah. I, hey, Dallas came up. I saw on some Twitter feeds for yeah, Preston Williams. You know. Uh, but so far, so good. Uh, no, you know, Miami was able to avoid the first week injury bug. I understand a lot of teams haven't, and that that's just scary, man. Like that's just, I mean, it and it's part of the game. Like, what are you going to do? But, um, yeah. you know, they they've said Tor- Toronto Armstead's been out there too. I mean, it's been everyone, but everyone big is out there except Byron Jones. So. We'll so that's see. one of the big things, like, and when Teron was with the Saints, he was highly respected because he was one of the first linemen. He would always show for OTAs. He was always at training camp. He always, you know, he did everything he was supposed to do. He's the right. ultimate hard worker at that at his position. Yeah. He'll and, be and he, missed, unless Trevor Penning is fucking. And he's going to hard. help. He's definitely going to help the young guys. He's already He's already got all the young guys together on his own time and taught them stuff. So um, if and and now I if I were to say the 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 rising star or the best player so far it's a uh, our third round pick Eric Ezukanma he's a wide receiver and I think he's pretty much the next Preston Williams so in your deeper dynasty leagues like look out for that guy he's been making plays he's essentially Devonte Parker that's what that's what he's been in practice. Jumping over dudes, making you know tough catches over the smaller corners. Um, so look out for him. But uh, I'm gathering from the Twitterverse and the Dolphin beat writers that that's probably so far been the best guy in the seven day practices. Um, but hey, Tua has been looking good, and I know training camp means nothing, but at least. Uh, at least he's not looking bad. There are some quarterbacks looking terrible, throwing picks like the the Patriots had like ten straight red zone uh, fails. I saw in a practice thing. So Tua has only thrown two interceptions in seven days in practice. Too. I'm telling you. All right, let's cut this guy off here. He's the Miami Dolphins beat writer. I'm just saying. Hey, uh, he loves someone, them fans. Someone it's put. Thousand dollars on two to win MVP. Right now, that's seventy-five grand. If he wins. Yeah, he's just out a thousand bucks, basically. <laughs> <laughs> Probably. <laughs> Probably. Yeah. Look. All right. What else you got? Same. My Finn's training camp sounds absolutely phenomenal down there in Miami. I'm telling you, dude. I mean, hey, even. Our boy Omar Kelly, the most hated and slash loved uh, beat reporter for Sun Sentinel, he claims that uh, Tua practices better than Ryan Tannehill. So he got that going for him. You know what I mean? I mean, oh hmm. you know, Tua had the green, the orange jersey today. He was playing a little mix up of Hawaii, his Hawaiian music. Who didn't have an orange jersey today. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like everybody's out there wearing orange jerseys. No. You got seven days, okay? Day one was a jersey a day? One jersey. Who whoever had the best practice. Yeah, yeah. And then they get to they they get to do the playlist too for music. So it was like the first guy was Liam Eikenberg. And then it was like Zach Sealer. Then Ty then Waddle, Tyreek, Tua. You know what I mean? So, big monogamy. Nah, nah. Yeah, he's been one. Hey, he's been okay. He has been getting cooked, but who isn't going to get cooked by Tyree Kill? Come on, man. Come on, Flint. Flint, who Marshall, isn't? Who Marshall isn't going to get cooked? cooked by Tyree Kill? I mean, who? What? I said Marshawn Lattimore doesn't get cooked by Tyree Kill. I mean, he's like leaps and bounds better than no egg monogamy. <laughs> well, Miami did beat the Saints without Tyreek Hill last night. Yeah, Flint, Flint's not getting cooked by Tyreek Hill. Flint's, Flint's locked down, not. dude. Flint runs a three, uh, four, three, one, forty, dude. So you better watch out. Yeah, locked down. <laughs> I don't. Miami does not play. They call in the island corner. The Chiefs this year. The, mm. 
45 yard lead. <laughs> You're just going to run a curl, Flint. You got to get up in him. You got to press him a little, Flint. Well, I mean, if we roll into New Orleans training camp here, I mean, we're talking the number one goaded wide receivers back on the field in Michael Thomas. The number one slant. Two he, was running, slant. He, was, he was running slants. He was running slants. Slant so they said his slant game is on point, but him and Jameis have a beautiful, beautiful corner route that they, they just run to perfection. Absolutely looking forward to watching Mike T get some deep balls and not a freaking four-yard slant from Drew Brees every other play. Uh, Jameis has been in the beginning of training camp. He was throwing a lot of interceptions, unfortunate, mm. but he's settled in, baby. Up. He's cleaned it up the past couple of days. He's settled in. He's got the chemistry now. He finally found Adam Trotman, who got injured last year, is back on the field, and he is the star of training camp. Yeah, fans the, get the fans what they want. Yeah, Adam, what's up with Adam. your offensive linemen like starting fights? Oh, though, we're getting to it. We're getting to it. <laughs> Trevor Penning's just a bad motherfucker, dude. He he doesn't take shit from anybody, and we're we're seeing that. But it's like I've seen all three videos of him initiating fights. Two of those are not his fault by any means. He just freaking bullied people, and he's had punches thrown at him more than he's more than he's given punches. So uh, maybe he's just trash talking, getting under some skin. But that's that's what he's there to do. That's what he's there to do. He kind of. He put uh, Davenport on fucking skates one day and just scooted him <laughs> down the field. He took some random DB, scooted him down the field the next day. Trevor Penning's looking very good. He's just got to control his temper. We got and kicked out. Yeah, he, got, he didn't get kicked out. So did Malcolm Roach, though, and Malcolm Roach was one of the issues. But The video I watched, that, that line was throwing the punches, not Penning. Yeah, it was not Penning. <laughs> and they're just like it was. It was after that one. That's when they kicked Penning out. They're just like, all right, dude, you got to get. They might have get Penning might have been throwing a slur. You don't know. Yeah. <laughs> but Olave and James Winston have a beautiful connection going on right now. They are cooking the same secondary with the Honey Badger out. He officially he finally returned today after dealing with family matters, improving the same secondary. But Marcus May has been struggling. On deep ball coverages, mm. he's getting cooked, but he is returning from an injury, and he's learning a new system. So we we get it, but he's got he's got to step up a little bit. Marcus May was an elite safety before he got hurt. He's got to he's got to return to that form. Uh, Alvin Kamara, this is unfortunate. His trial got pushed back to September 29th, so we could see a mid season Alvin Kamara suspension which is going to stuck uh, for fantasy owners. I was hoping it would occur at the beginning of the season, but we're going to get a mid-season suspension. Uh, looking at a minimum of four to six games. Golly. Yeah, so mid-season Alvin Kamara fans, fantasy football. It's Punch a guy, get seen this molest 30 women, get six games. It doesn't matter. Yeah, Dude, it doesn't matter what right. you do. Smoke is hot for the whole season. Ricky Williams would be in the Hall of Fame if he was uh, getting massages yeah. instead of doing pot. Same for Pete Rose. <laughs> yeah. But Pete Rose betting on games. <laughs> True. Uh, Pete Rose deserves I, to be in the Hall of Fame anyway. Yeah, Pete Rose does deserve to be in the Hall of Fame. Uh, I already said this, but tight end Adam Trotman is showing off in practice with the most receptions and two-minute drill and most receiving touchdowns going into the red zone. He's looking very good. Uh, Marshawn Lattimore. Is absolutely bullying people when he's on when he isolates the one side of the field. Paulson Adebo, the rookie from last year, is going into year two, is showing that he can supply them with another corner on the other side of the field, so Lattimore can travel. And Adebo will play the uh, where's my notes right here. Adebo is playing the right side of the field, and he is shutting down while Lattimore travels. So that is fantastic news. Because, I mean, last year, Debo didn't get cooked a whole lot. He had one-hand interception, a couple of really good defensive plays. He's showing off really well that he can contain that right side of the field while Lattimore travels. Uh, Trevor Penning, unfortunately, getting in fights, uh, being a little <laughs> too too aggressive with defensive linemen. I think, that, I think the reason they kicked him out is not so much the physicality of the fights, but they just don't want to get anybody hurt. So maybe they just kick him out to uh, – Relieve some anger, just like, hey man, go get a massage, Sean Watson style 
on us. Jeez. Uh, yeah. Come on. That's going to be a joke forever. It's never going to it, die now. It will never die. Uh, I mean, look how long the Big Ben. I mean, those jokes are still going. Yeah, dude. They're still going. Tyron Matthew returned to practice today, improving the Saints secondary, which is arguably has the second best secondary, the best secondary in the NFL. And then Chauncey. Gardner Johnson today decided he's going to limit himself in practice and hold out for a now. Just in the middle of training camp. He's like, I want a contract. I'm going to hold out. It, de it so. depends, Billy. It depends on some of the beat reporters because, like, the jet, some of the Jets beat reporters are destroying them. Like, yeah. you'll have, you'll have beat reporters that are saying, hey, these guys are having a shitty and terrible camp. I understand it's just training camp, and you shouldn't look at it too hard either way. But no, not all people are having a, a, an elite camp. <laughs> like, yeah, not everybody's having an elite camp. I mean, yeah. But New Orleans is having one of them really good camps. Andy Dalton and Ian Book are all finishing around the same, the same side. Andy Dalton's obviously going to be the number two. Ian Book's obviously going to be the number three. We're going to go in with a three quarterback roster. This season, based on previous injuries from the past couple of years, they're going to run a three three quarterback roster. Thanks, Caleb. So we'll see. We'll see how that goes. But Ian Book, Ian Dalton, Taysom, and James Winston are looking good. Taysom wow. Hill has a foot yeah, injury, a rib injury now. He also had a foot injury, but now he has a rib injury, and he's going to be sidelined for the rest of training camp. So he's not going to get paid this season. No, he's going to get paid. He's getting paid as a tight end, so he's getting ten million dollars. Okay. Instead of his $40 million, he would get paid as a quarterback. Because <laughs> his contract is fucking weird. Gosh. I went to I went to the details of his contract last last year when the contract happened, and it was fucking weird, man. It's, if he plays quarterback and plays like 70% of snaps, throws for like 25 touchdowns and rushes for like seven touchdowns, it's, it's some weird stipulation. He can collect $40 million. Year one. But isn't he like the fourth QB on the depth chart? Yeah, he's not listed as a quarterback because this is tight end now. Wow. So. Taysom. Hence why he got a rib injury. He was out there receiving the ball. But now we got Adam Trotman back, so I'm not really sweating it. Okay. We'll see if Jawan Watson, Jawan Johnson makes the roster with Taysom and Adam Trotman there. And we just signed, we just signed a guy. I doubt. Jawan Johnson makes the roster. He was a tight end last year that had like one spectacular catch. Mm -hmm. And then that was it. But that concludes Saints training camp. I do want Set. to interject. Hold on. Yep. Before, before. Uh, one thing that I missed, a little important to fantasy owners and uh, fantasy football players that are thinking about Mike Gusecki. Great talent. Top 10, maybe tight end. Some people put him there. He did not take any snaps at wide receiver. So take yeah, what, what is Mike McDaniel will. doing? He, he is going to block more than he ever has, but he's still playing on the franchise tag. He says, I have to earn the money. So he knows what he has to do. So well, if he's a blocking tight end, he's not going to be earning a lot of money. Exactly. 10 million a year, which is, which is his franchise tag. Right. Which is, so, I don't know. Seth, how's uh, the Cowboys looking? Let me, let, me get, let, me get it, let me keep it short and sweet for you boys. I'm not going to go on the entire depth chart like these two clients. Okay. Whoa, hey, we hey, know hey, Michael hey. Gallup out till a little bit into the season. Unfortunately, James Washington uh, has broke his foot in uh, training camp. So, there goes the uh, guy who brought in to be the two while Gallup was gone. See uh, you later, alligator. Come on, OBJ. We want you in ah, Dallas. No. Tampering. Mm. Tampering. Tampering. Come, come on in. Tyler Smith, the rookie first rounder, looking very impressive. Playing at all five positions, no, all four positions, I should say, at training camp, looking dominant. You know what Diggs and Parsons are doing. Them, the dogs. Hey, all right. Hey, hey, hey Seth, uh, uh, you wish you had a guy named Amari Cooper on your team? That's why you see right now. I don't know. He got hurt earlier in training camp. He is now listed. <laughs> he's now listed as healthy. He's back. He is. Yeah, he's back. 
He's a little injury prone though. Amari's getting up there. He's not even getting up there in age. And Amari Cooper yeah, he's only like is constantly yeah. injury riddled. So it's like, yes, we could use Amari Cooper, but for nine games and then like five games unhealthy playing, it's like nah, I don't know. I just CD don't know. Lamb, a CD Lamb is going to break the receive. CD Lamb's going to have three thousand receiving yards this year if he can get yeah. open. Ain't shit. No, I think. I think Dalton Schultz is going to have just a beautiful year at tight end for them. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Definitely uh, Dalton Schultz over Gasecki when the time comes in fantasy. Everybody. Just saying. For sure. Last note. Last note. J. Ron Curse at safety. Looking like a stud. Curse looking like a stud, huh? Yeah. Hmm. Okay. So. That was a weak point for my. Was uh, Dallas with safety. CD will, showing out. CD will. Do you guys have like a speedy running back you can maybe put on the outside? Pollard. Tony Pollard. Okay. Yeah. I don't know. Do you still think the uh, Cowboys are the team to beat Vance in the NFC <laughs> least? <laughs> I mean, they're not. They're not my division winners. I don't have them picked as a division winner. Yeah, Whoa! He already picked it. Yeah, he picked the Eagles. He's a yeah. I picked clown. the Eagles. Wow. I already put oh, I a guess. future bet when I was in Colorado that the Eagles will win the division. Okay, now with that future bet though, I I feel like after preseason we'll get we should get one redo of picks. My picks are locked in, dude. I'm not changing a cent. Wow, Kyle, that's why I'm carrying a belt to your house for fantasy because I beat y'all down. Okay, so dang, everyone's picking the Eagles, huh? You better have the red carpet rolled out when I pull up. E e e e first Eagles. year champion, first year champion, easy peasy. Well, uh, the Eagles beat writers are just hooting and hollering about Devontae Smith and Jalen Rager right now, and it's like I can oh, see the Devontae man, Smith. I, I, I'm not. I do not believe a single cent of the Jalen Rager <laughs> beat here. Like I'm not gonna waste an unprotected pick. Or an undrafted pick on Jalen Rager in fantasy football. He's not coming off the free agent bench. If I have anything to say about it, but hey, the Eagles, the Eagles wide receiver. <laughs> he did, Billy. I think he did. Oh, yeah. I did Vance, not pick the Ra I did not pick the Raiders to win that division. But you picked Derek Carr for MVP. I picked Derek Carr for MVP, <laughs> but I don't have the Raiders winning that division. Okay. I, I don't think he has the Chargers. I got the Chargers winning that division. Oh my God! Listen, Philly, Philly is clown town. You know they're gonna hype them up. Uh, I I love Jalen Hurts for being an Oklahoma guy, but they the, do the, have a lot the, of wide the receivers. Ball, the deep right. ball accuracy. What? What? Devontae Jalen Rager showing out Brown? like they're saying. Yeah, they have, they have Devontae Rager. Smith and AJ Brown. That's not that's a, the a best plethora. wide receiving core in the NFC least. What do you mean? Uh, maybe. No, you wanted to agree. You just Speedy Lamb by himself is better, dude. No, no, you have to agree. That's... I would take CD and Healthy Gallup over them too. I don't know, man. Gallup is a fucking go up and get it guy. All right, we, I, I me, think... and I saw it with my own two eyes, and Vance saw them too. This motherfucker toe tapped the back of the end zone right on the Saints. We were right, we were a goal line, man. We saw you know that thing just than I was probably out getting a beer when that happened. You know who's <laughs> better than Michael Gallup? Cedric Wilson, who's actually um, third on the Miami Dolphins depth chart. Who's like fifth on the Miami Dolphins depth chart. And you got you guys would who will love probably receive an injury, and Mike McDaniel will have to start playing <laughs> running backs out at wide receiver position. Yeah, keep your hospital backfield contained, okay? Yeah, hey, dude. What what is Miami doing? <laughs> who's the starting who's the starting running back? Has that been reported from training camp? No. Listen. Billy, Billy. Chase Edmonds looking good. Raheem Mostert's looking good. No, I haven't even that. I haven't heard I haven't heard one I haven't heard one pip on Sony Michelle. He may be dead. Miles Gas <laughs> Miles Gaskin is somewhere, you know, chilling with you know, Steven Ross on his yacht, Sogvin Ahmed. I don't know where the hell – I mean, I don't know what, what these running backs are doing. All I know – listen, out of all the videos, out of everything, I saw Chase Edmonds have a catch and then Chase Edmonds have a like a draw play that went for 20 yards. 
I know Raheem Mostert is good to practice because he posted on his Twitter. You know what I mean? You know, like a J.K. Dobbins situation. He's like, yo, I'm good. So I don't know what the hell's. I would not draft a Miami running back at all in fantasy. Let's just get that out there, too, because I have no clue. We'll, we'll put out an APB for for Sony Michelle. <laughs> Figure out what's going on there. Yeah. Someone's got to find this guy in Miami. I don't even know. <laughs> Where has Tony Michelle been? He well, might have got drugged at a club. <laughs> I don't know, man. He's probably. Thanks, Cody. <laughs> you know. Appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Cody. Yeah, you know, Sony Michelle, man. I don't know. He... Miami <laughs> has him. You know. I don't know. No. Well, let me he's, all, he's listed on the down. roster, but. McDaniel's be like, Moser, get in there, baby. Yeah, like, McDaniel runs in. Oh I actually got tears from that Sonny Michelle comment. That's funny. Yeah, uh, yeah no. I think most are still going to be the starter until he gets hurt. <laughs> listen, okay, listen. Day one, RB1, we do have a fullback. So I formation, Gasecki, Waddle, Hill, the fullback. I think it's going to be Chase Edmonds. Don't, okay. I think it'll be Chase Edmonds week one, barring any kind of injuries. Who's the power back? Sony. Sony Michelle. But I would beat Sony Michelle in the hole and blow his fucking knee out. I mean, Dude's, dude is lightweight. Listen, I think Sony that's if he gets bigger. up from the grave. That's if I think he gets Sony, up from yeah, the grave. if he shows up. <laughs> Listen, I think Sony Michelle's <laughs> thicker, thicker than you think. First, first play call. Will be a play action PA crosser. He's probably like a solid. Know. He's probably like a brick house two twenty five Vance. No, he's two sixteen. He That's what he's listed at. He'd probably knock my upper body off my fucking. You know. They don't need a power back. Mm. It'll be fine. Oh, you need a Pat Barrett. You tell me on a fourth and one. You think old skinny old Chase Edmonds is going to blow somebody off their feet? Um, do you know? What Tyreek Hill does on fourth and ones, no one can cover that cut and then in. No one what, can out? catch him. No one can. No one can cover that out. Come on. Hmm. No, no, Miami's they, O line stinks. They they <laughs> suck. And I mean, they're they were they're getting pushed around, and if it wasn't for Tua's release on some of these videos, Tua would have absolutely got flatlined. Listen. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> they got work to do with that <laughs> bullshit, dude. I mean, <laughs> yeah. Michelle. Like you. All right. Yeah. To, to get on to some other teams' training camp, we're going to talk about a situation that we love to talk about. Baker Mayfield. Oh. Uh, it's reported that Baker hot. Mayfield is not outshining Sam Darnold, Matt Corral, but Baker Mayfield has a better connection with the wide receivers than Matt Corral and Sam Darnold. And Baker Mayfield and the Terrence Marshall connection is apparently heating up. And so, the fans love Baker. And the fans obviously love Baker Mayfield. I mean, poor Sam Darwin has come walking down the track. I'm pretty sure him and Baker quit walking together because he got tired of just Baker, Baker, Baker. <laughs> just like, man, if you're oh, Sam you Darwin, that's... I don't, I just don't, I don't see how Baker Mayfield's not shining whenever any clip you see at a training camp. Is him just unleashing a fucking football and it just landing in the bread basket of the wide receiver's hands. Oh, I mean, he's I'm... he's snapping it. People say his arm power is all the way there. He's working the legs, the upper body. He's back. And like, I bet you know, Carolina you know, wants wants him to be the starter. Like they oh, don't yeah. want him to be the starter. Oh, oh you know the media is going to influence. I mean, the Carolina's back. Twitter. They, the only clip they showed of Matt Corral was him standing on the field. Just pacing back and forth, waiting on Baker and Sam to get there. And the, the only, only, the, only tw- the only clip I've seen of uh, Matt Corral is they both took the snap and they're going to throw it out. Baker threw like a ten or a fifteen. Matt Corral threw like a five. Matt Corral missed the fifteen like super bad, and Baker put the five right on the money. So it's like hmm. they were like, the "Fuck you, Matt! Look at Baker's perfect throw right here." They're dragging mm. him in the water, dude. They want Baker. They do want Baker. But Matt Corral has been showing up to camp earlier and leaving later than Baker and Sam. Not that that means anything. He's got to obviously have the talent to back it up, which I think Matt Corral it was the best quarterback prospect coming out of the draft last year. 
for this year. So we'll see. What about uh, the Bills? Josh Allen fighting with his defensive tackle. Oh, I love it, dude. I love a quarterback that's a fucking dog. <laughs> I love it, dude. If you're, I mean, Josh Allen's not a not a small quarterback either. I mean, you're talking six five two thirty. He'll yeah. He'll get up in there and blow somebody up, dude. I bet he truck sticks somebody, and mm. it pissed them off. So I love a quarterback that's a dog, man. That's why I liked Cam Newton. I like Baker Mayfield. I love watching Josh Allen play, dude. Just he's a dog, man. I love him. How about your uh, your MVP pick? Carr, how's he been? Derek Carr, uh, he, him, Devontae Adams, and Hunter Renfro all got inside of a smart car today, and it was quite, <laughs> it was quite literally the funniest video I've seen in a long time. I saw that, yeah. It was hilarious. Hunter, Hunter Renfro's in charge of ordering the Uber, and he got not a anymore. smart car. Yeah, not anymore. He's no longer in charge of ordering the Uber. No more. <laughs> yeah, that shit, that shit was hilarious. Yeah. What about um, Ryan Jensen, the center, getting pretty – he's pretty much out. For the Bucks, yeah, uh, I haven't Aaron? seen an update on him. I don't know if they he's announced out. that he's out. Out, okay, he's, he's out. He's out. Out. So I have a list of tra- training camp updates. We'll run through them. Tim okay. Patrick for the Broncos tore the ACL and is out for the season. Unfortunate news there. Trey um, Lance. Yeah, I, I've heard. This is just what I've heard on Twitter about Trey Lance that he. Hasn't had the best training camp so far. They said he has a fucking cannon, though. He does have a cannon, yeah. 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 But he's he's for sure the one, dude. They're not even let Jimmy G like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come yeah. near the team, dude. They're like, get out of here, dude. So yeah, this, this training camp is going to be to work out the bugs for Trey Lance, and then he'll he's obviously going to play in some preseason games. He'll probably play a quarter or maybe even two quarters to get get some real reps in. But he's playing against like a top five defense in his own defense when they go against the ones. So mm. I could, I could easily see why he's struggling going into technically year one of him being out on the field, the full as a full-time starter. I see why he's struggling, but it's like once he, once he gets some reps and gets comfortable, that offense is built around making quarterbacks comfortable. So we'll see. Miami's only draft pick depends on Trey Lance now. So, I will be rooting for him to fail. Sorry. Man. Saints rookie smoke Monday, undrafted pick, had a significant injury, knee injury in practice and expected to be out. Uh, Bill safety Jordan Poyer hyperextended his elbow but could still be ready for week one. Let's see about that. Mm-hmm. Vikings tight end Irv Smith, who has high hopes with Kirk Cousins, had a thumb injury and had surgery, is not yet ruled out for the opener. So we'll see then. Uh, here's the Ryan Jensen one. Is went down with a leg injury, is pending status, which you guys said he's out. So that sucks for him. Uh, big, big signing, I think. Uh, Seth may have other thoughts. Cowboy signed Anthony Barr. Yeah, I was gonna get around to it, but veteran presence. Yeah, I mean, I he, love he, was, he was he was one them. of the he was one of the elite. Yeah, me too, Cody. I talked about that earlier. It fucking sucks. I kind of wanted to see James Washington shine. Yeah, I, I Anthony Barr. <laughs> Anthony Barr, obviously elite. A couple years ago, was a top linebacker named big body over the middle of the field, and maybe in this system he he thrives. Maybe, maybe he does really good. I like the pickup. Now that's Michael Parsons rush the passer. Anthony Barr is more of a coverage run stopping guy. So put him out there at LBE. Let's we'll see what happens. Yeah, I love it. I love it. Uh, another unfortunate thing, Hollywood Brown gets a little dumb today. Decides he wants to go 120 and an 85. And now he has criminal. He got arrested for criminal speeding. <laughs> like, what the? F- like, some people from Arizona say they're just spicing it up. Like, yeah, you're going to get arrested for going that fast, but it's going to be like a max $1,000 fine, and he'll be out before you know. Yeah. Yeah, I doubt like, anything significant comes out of that. There's not going to be any kind suspensions. Of, There's not going to be any delays. He might get it's just going to be like maybe a game. Suspend. If it's okay, a game a game would be all right. If they if they were going to suspend him, I don't know. Speeding is just one of those things where it's like he was doing 120, which is stupid, just completely stupid for a player of his caliber. But 
Like, what, what kind of car was he driving? Yeah. Probably I didn't get that detail. Like, see, how is his setting her weight? And I see criminal speeding. I'm thinking like a buck sixty, a buck seventy down this highway. They're like 120, and I'm like 120. Like that, that's criminal speeding. Depends yeah. on what you drive, dude. 120 what? will get you shake. Yeah, 120 is fast as fuck. Bro. I go 100 all the time. And not 120. Not 120. Oh, look, nothing. I'll say, I'll say, there's a huge Bro. difference between going 100 and 120. Huge difference. Yeah. I feel comfortable not when you're driving at right 100 vehicles. miles an hour. Once I get over, once I get to 120, I totally uncomfortable. <laughs> you know, you haven't been there enough. I've never went 120. Oh, your wife watches this show. You better watch yeah, out. Yeah. I've never went 120 driving to Oklahoma City. <laughs> they should make them. They should make them ride a bike to practice. Yeah, 20 over any limit is reckless, and that guy was going. Yeah, that's insane. Yeah. He'll probably just get a couple, like a thousand dollars worth of tickets. Like, see what Cody said. What Cody said. One twenty and an eighty-five. Are you sure the speed limit was eighty-five? Yeah, in Arizona it's fast, or in Phoenix it's fast. Well, our our speed limits here are what eighty? Yeah, eighty. Yeah, in Texas yeah. they're ninety, and in Arizona they're eighty-five. It's like that's pretty but normal. Still, like twenty over. Is 105 from that, and he and you add in another 15 like that is, <laughs> bro. Hey, that's, that's grounds. Really, it's you're grounds for an arrest and a tow. It's that's grounds. Like, yeah, uh, that, that's close to like a felony or something. It has to be. It has to be. Like that's crazy. No, <laughs> he'll, he'll is, get a couple. Uh, he'll probably get a couple thousand dollar fines, maybe a game from the NFL, and then it'll be done. <laughs> At least yeah. it's not like he's going a buck. Like I said, a buck sixty, buck seventy out here. Maybe maybe he'll get suspended for the season, or something. You know, Oof. wow, Slap that would that. that would be a fucking hysterical. <laughs> I mean, I would yeah. lose it. But some big contract signings: DK Metcalf gets a contract extension, three years, seventy-two million, with a thirty million dollars signing bonus, which was the biggest for a wide receiver to get ever. Until two days later, Debo Samuel turned around and gets a three year seventy-three point five million dollar extension. A forty-one million dollars signing bonus. Good for yeah, all the wide receivers. receivers. All the, yeah. I mean, they're getting open they're, up your checkbook, Jerry. They're getting their wild. They're, yeah, if Jerry Jones lets CD Lamb walk, oh my gosh, can you can you? My fanhood, my God, no. fucking yeah. In my in my no. fanhood, my God. That's like I'm questioning. I'm questioning being a Boston Red Sox fan anymore if they get rid of <laughs> Xander Endeavors. Aaron Jones or Aaron Judge is about to break uh, the, the Roger Maris's all natural record, dude. Home runs. Bronx Bombers are back. Like Billy's just saying that because they lost Tyreek. The one, the one place I say you skimp on money is running backs. Running back, but a yes. true one. Yeah, you, you it's can't. Worth it. You, you. It's worth the cap. And Jerry Jones' because old senile ass is fi- is figuring it out. A little too late. <laughs> I bet. Yeah, he paid. <laughs> Look, when Zeke when Zeke was in his prime, right? Now his contract doesn't seem too big based on other contracts that are coming out. But at the time, his contract was astronomical. But if you really look at Zeke in his prime, you mean to tell me you wouldn't have paid that man? No, I'm – yes. Yeah, look I, at Zeke for three seasons, him. dude. That shit was insane. Yeah. Yeah, I would have paid a player. I would have paid a player like Zeke, but there's only like a handful of running backs you pay that to. Adrian Peterson's of the world, Derrick Henry's, stuff like that. Like, but statistically, Zeke right. was there. Right, he was. That's what I'm saying. He was a top. His, his explosiveness was there. Everything. Yeah, it's like the minute top. he signed that contract, slowly yeah. downhill. Yeah, he has. Taken but before seven. that contract, it's like, man, dude, Zeke was. He was like top two in fantasy football picks. He was top two in rushing yards. He was doing everything he could to make sure he was getting that bag. And then after he got the bag, he's still a thousand yard rusher. But Pittsburgh does it year after year without receivers. Where's their rings? I mean, what? He's saying that Pittsburgh does it year after year without receivers. He says don't pay receivers. But yeah, I mean, when's the last time Pittsburgh won a ring? Two thousand ten, eleven. And I they would won. bet you there's a there's a number one on that team, like a hardcore yeah. like. Well, the Deontay first, Johnson is the number one. Well, they first 
they won and one with in like Heinz Ward. Yeah. Heinz Ward was really good. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. I mean, they Wasn't paid Ant- him. Antoine Randall L on that team? Antoine, yeah, Antoine Randall L. He was on the yeah. back end of his career with that team, though. But still very good. Yeah. I mean, but, but that was a while ago when, you know, teams were getting to Super Bowls without, you know, wide receivers. The game evolves. It changes. And everyone's doing running back by committee now. You know, you the Titans and – you know, the Vikings with Dalvin Cook, like there's only a couple of team, a handful of teams. I mean, hell. No, I mean. No, it's just because you pay your receiver doesn't mean you are winning a championship. But because you don't pay receivers, you're definitely not winning a championship anymore. I mean. Unless you get, unless they just absolutely break out in their first three years. Because after three years, everybody's demanding new contracts. Like they're not even playing out four years. It's after well, year three, there's like new contract or I'm holding out. The the Patriots the didn't have flip, really. It's receiver or uh running backs are a dime a dozen. The yeah. the, the Patriots there's didn't no have Devontae any... Adams. There's no Devontae Adams in the league other than himself, and there won't be another Devant Devontae Adams come out of the draft for God knows how long. No, wide receivers are not a dime a dozen. Well the Patriots there are didn't like have number wide receivers when they won the Super Bowl. Their last Super Bowl, Julian Edmond went fucking ape shit. So, <laughs> like he was, he put up a really good season and a really good postseason. The last Super Bowl that they won, hence why he got the MVP. You know what the, you need? The Super Bowl MVP. Win a Super Bowl, an elite quarterback. You have to have it nowadays. A good defense. Well, yeah, but you have to have an elite quarterback. Straight up. But that's – do you got to have like a top five quarterback or just an elite quarterback? Unless you so, have – There's so many elite world. quarterbacks in the league right now. Like Kirk Cousins there is very good. good. Is he considered elite? And, and, and that's why, you know, it's hard to, it's hard to pick. There's a, there's a lot more elite quarterbacks than there were even like 10 years ago. For so sure. you're saying the top, top 10 is elite? I, I, I could probably say there's like 15 quarterbacks – right now that could take their team to a Super Bowl. All right. Next week we will have a list of Barrett's top 15 <laughs> quarterbacks that can lead <laughs> to the Super Bowl. All as right. well as next week, the B-list makes a return as we head yep. into NFL preseason. We get the NFL preseason B-list. Yeah. Look out for Tua coming up that ring. <laughs> yeah, look out for Tua being on that top 15. <laughs> but to close out the show – we have the greatest football game on turf taking place tomorrow night, Thursday. Wow. The Jacksonville Jaguars versus the Oakland Raiders in the wow. Hall of Fame game tomorrow night. Who do you got? Now, this game Who's fucking saying? sucks, but I'm going to watch it because it's football. I will be locked onto the TV. I don't care. Neither Both teams have already stated they're not playing any starters. Trevor Lawrence, yep, not playing. Nobody's playing. Like, we're just going to be a league full of nobodies. Maybe 10. I'm just saying. I'm not saying the top no, 15 is tracking. elite. I'm saying they <laughs> may. I don't know. Listen, I'll figure it out. But I'll give yeah, you 15. We need a top 15 back. list. I'll give you I'll give you 15 next, ne- next week that you could win. You know. Right, Kelly, I, gotta, I don't know if I'll turn that bitch on. What's it on? ESPN? Like, is it on Amazon? Is this their first the game? The Hall of Fame game is terrible every it's year. It's, it's football. Awful. What are you talking it's about? It's awful, but it's it's football. It's on NBC tomorrow. Oh, yeah. So we'll get the music and everything, dude. Come yeah, on. Yeah, dude. We're going to get oh, – man, we're going to get the slide in. They're not together. Yeah, but he's still going to slide in. He's still on NBC. I, don't, I doubt he does a slide, man. That was him. And oh, he's going to do – who's no, pairing up? Who's pairing Mike up? Mike Tirico, dude. Tirico. Oh, Mike Tirico. Oh, I hate Mike Tirico. What? Mike <laughs> Tirico is a living legend, dude. I'm not a fan, dude. Al Michaels is a living legend. Mike Tirico is a second. Obviously. He's a Mike Tir- no, <laughs> you, just, you just didn't watch Mike Tirico in the early 2000s I watched, look, on Sunday look, Night Football. Al Michaels, on Mike Tirico would replace Al Michaels two times out of the year, and there's a reason for it. Well, 
He's because he had, he's on he's, he's on Booger yeah, and man. Charles level. Booger. And Charles. Oh no, no 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 no! You are Dude. crazy, bro. No way. You're out of you're out of your lane on that one. What that the hell? Rough. Mike Tarico is an expert in craft. Look at McFarland at his bottom of the barrel. And I hope you see this, Booger. You asshole. Oh, Booger is absolutely terrible. Uh, yeah. And we only hate Charles Davis because he does Madden. Yeah. Because Charles Davis is. That's true. Pro repeatable he probably lines, doesn't repeatable deserve lines, it. Repeatable lines, repeatable lines. Charles Davis repeatable. and Booger McFarland are the two worst commentators. At, but Akeem Tlaib is getting up there. Like, he's getting really annoying to listen to. But. <laughs> And I think he, I think he's going to start. They're giving him more games. Like keep to lead. He's very smart, very football knowledgeable. But man, he just not a fan yeah. of listening to him talk. Yeah, you know, you you think we would hate uh... Drew Brees was bad too. Yeah, Drew Drew Brees was very we... good before the booth, like not in the booth, but like doing the pregame show and all that. He was very good in that situation. Yeah. But his booth, his booth skills. They thought it was going to be like Tony Romo. It was not. Yeah, the goat is Tony Romo right now. The goat Up is Tony Romo right now. Oh, it's it's got to be, be, it's got to be Tony Romo and the guy that does college football. Uh, Joel Klatt. Joel Klatt. Yeah, those two are the goats. Gus Johnson. And Gus Johnson. Yep. Mm. Dude, when Joel Klatt and Gus Johnson get on TV, I don't care what they could do. UTEP versus whatever school, and I'm <laughs> old, watching. Uh, old I'm Dominion. Watching. <laughs> yeah, Old Dominion versus UTEP. I'm watching. If Joel uh, Klatt and, and Gus Edwards are there. Oh my! Look at this. Oh, Cody! Cody come on, no, dude. But, but, hey, I will agree. <laughs> Gus, Johnson, Gus Johnson gets very annoying sometimes. Joe, Joe, what? Legit. Dude, Gus Johnson, man, he just sometimes just he, he, he goes overboard, man. Gus Johnson is the voice of wow, unbelievable. It's like CD that's like saying Mike or the TD. That's like saying Mike Breen is the worst uh, NBA announcer. It brings He's excitement, best. Cody. It makes you want to get out of your chair, man. We know. Yeah, Gus, jo me, Gus Johnson makes you want to stand up and let count. Me take care of this. 10, let me take care 15. of this, boys. Let me take care of this, boys. We know OSU doesn't have that wham playability like, oh, get out of your chair. Oh, no. no, 60 yard touchdown. We know. But whenever he does Oklahoma games and he, we run, go on cork a seven yarder and you hear Hollywood, you know, or Stevie <laughs> or. Marvin Mims, you know, some, you know, that it's it's insane. Yeah. One day y'all feel that. Gus Johnson created Hollywood, by the way. <laughs> Hollywood Brown. He was the creator behind that name. Wow. Was he? Mike Green is the one that yells bang. But he said not after every free throw. Oh. Well, Mike. But I, th I thought Hollywood was from like. Yeah, who's better? Who's her even? Who even touches? Who even smells Marvin Mims' jockstrap on OSU? <laughs> yeah, we'll wait. Dude's, a, dude's literally yeah. a, a sitting first rounder, waiting just to be drafted. <clears throat> we'll wait for you, Cody. I don't even think anybody <laughs> from OSU can guard the OEs or Drake Stoops. <laughs> Mims is elite. Mims is elite, dude, man. Like last year. The, the bozo, the bo Tyler Walsh is another way. Yeah, Tyler Walsh is an afterthought for Baltimore right now. Marvin Mims is going to walk. Marvin Mims is going to walk onto an NFL team and be the number one or number two, depending on where he goes. This guy doesn't even know his team. This guy doesn't even know his team. Oh, well, he, call, he calls I'm OSU. He calls OSU right. a Group Five team, not a Power Five. Wow, dude, and but in a college news because I'm way more excited for college football. Venables <laughs> is doing his thing on the recruiting trail, folks. He's getting four star defensive talent, five star defensive talent to roll into Oklahoma. And people say he wouldn't be able to recruit an offense. It's coming along as well. He's got a top ten recruiting class consensus. It's like, it's insane. Uh, you know, I didn't think Venables have a top ten class this first year. But if you guys follow it at all on any Twitter platform, anything like that, it's the recruits keep coming, and I think I think I think we could get a national championship in easily two to three years. I'm that I'm I'm that high hope and bricked about it. 
Right. Absolutely. <laughs> so he said Marvin Mims gets moved to DB in Stillwater. Marvin Mims gets – he will replace Spencer Sanders in Stillwater. <laughs> College football is better than the NFL, and I'm super pumped for that. In a couple of weeks, give you guys a rundown of what's coming on in the later shows. Next week we start with the B list. Barrett improvised a top 15 quarterback list that he thinks can <laughs> win a Super Bowl. So we got that coming on. We got preseason football coming on. College football – Starts August twenty third, something like that. Yeah, yeah and dude. then and then we're rolling into it. I mean, the week before, the Wednesday before that Thursday of college football starts, we're gonna have the top. I think there's eight elite games that are gonna be on TV that weekend. We're gonna go through all eight of them. I was uh, looking at the list today because I I couldn't keep a desk on the floor when I was looking at college football today. <laughs> uh. Okay, before we go, let me leave you guys with this little tidbit. That way you can get a little of a Rick sensation. The last time Oklahoma, okay, not only started with the lefty, they won a national championship, but the last time Oklahoma started a lefty and played UTEP as their first game yep. on the schedule, they won a national championship, and we played put UTEP this season. So All right, put in. your bets on. Yep. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for tuning in to Taking On Sports and Podcast. Peace. Bill Russell. That's why we're, oh, yeah, we're ending it right there. OU National Championships. See you, boys. See you on the next one. Peace. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for tuning in to the rebrand of That One Sports Podcast. Now moving on to Taking On Sports and Taking On Sports Podcast. As always, thank you for tuning in. You can catch us on Spotify, Apple Music, and Amazon Music. I will push the links out through Twitter and Facebook. So be looking for that as they will they're changing with the name change and the brand change. So as always, thank you for tuning in.